Hello crafty friends! My name is Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And I'm here today to show you how I made my first set of cards using the January 2023 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see how they're made, and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I debuted the January 2023 sheet load of cards and showed you the first set I made. Well, today I'm going to be showing you how I made that set and my team of collaborators are going to be joining me in showing you their first sets for the month. I have collaborators here on YouTube and over on Instagram. To see what the YouTube team has created, you're going to click on the hashtag in the title, which I have up on screen now, or you can use the link to the hashtag search in the description box. To see what the Instagram team created, I have a link to the hashtag search over there. And as always, everybody's individual links are down in the description box so you can check them out. I know that they would love for you to stop by, see what they created, and leave them some love. If you haven't yet downloaded the January 2023 sheet load of cards, and after watching today's video, you think you want to make your own, make sure to check out my debut video, which I have linked in the description box, and I will tell you how you can download this for free if you are a subscriber to my channel. This month's sheet load is going to yield you eight mini slimline cards using just two pieces of 12 by 12 pattern paper and some cardstock. Now yesterday I shared with you a closer look at the supplies I'll be using and as I go to the process I will let you know about the products and tools I bring in but if I do leave you with any questions you can always leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm going to get started by cutting my two pieces of pattern paper per the instructions. Now if your pattern paper has a certain direction, make sure you know that before you make the first cut. Since my pattern papers do have a branding strip, I need to cut that off before I make my first cuts and those are going to be two vertical pieces that are three inches wide. These are going to be the two pieces to the left on your diagram and later we will cut those down. For now, I'm going to take the large piece that was left over, rotate it 90 degrees and cut two strips off the bottom that are one inch. Then I will re-rotate it back and cut two strips that are two inches wide. This is just how I think you can make the most of the pieces that are left over. Speaking of leftovers, there is a two inch wide section left from the right and you will see at the end how I've used that on the inside of my cards. Now we're going to cut down our strips to their final sizes. The two pieces on the left we're going to cut in half so they are six inches tall and that's going to get us four of those pieces. Then the skinnier strips for piece B we cut to five inches tall and finally the little strips at the bottom get cut in half to three inches wide. I then cut that second piece of pattern paper in the same way. Now I'm going to show you how to cut one piece of the cardstock per the cutting guide. The first thing you'll do is cut a two and a quarter inch strip off the 11 inch side. And this is just a scrap that you could use for a future project. Then you're going to cut a piece that is six and a half inches wide and that will end up getting folded to be your card base. Now from the leftover, cut a piece that is two and a quarter inches wide and then cut that to five and a quarter inches tall and that is going to be piece B. Finally for me, I'm going to cut a piece from the leftover that is three inches tall by one and a quarter inches wide. Now that piece that's left over, you would cut your circle from, but for me, I will actually be using something different later. I'm going to make my own ephemera, so I'll just save this for later projects. 
Okay, I wanted to slow down the process here just a little bit and tell you another thing you can do with your cardstock. Now, because it's easier to explain, you need one piece from each. That's how I made it for the cutting guides. But if you want to conserve or make the most of your cardstock, there is another way that you can cut it. If you cut your card base just like I have been showing you with the two and a quarter inch strip down here, you can then get two of the piece B's from that strip, and then you could get two of the C's from the area you have up here. For your circle, you might not be able to get two out of what is left over, but you will have more cardstock left over from other pieces that you could use. So I thought I would show you how to cut one of those just if you want to do this differently, and then you would just have bigger pieces of white scraps left over for future projects. So that first thing is the same. You will have to cut one card base out of each one of the card stocks. Then with the strip that's left over at the bottom, it's already two and a quarter inches wide. So you're gonna cut two pieces that are five and a quarter inches tall. And then from this piece, which was right up here by this, you can cut it at three inches tall and then cut into one and a quarter inch sections, which I guess you can actually get three from, not just two. So what you would do if you're gonna do it this way is just cut until you have eight of each of the pieces and then the additional pieces of cardstock, you would just cut the card base and you would have those larger pieces left over. Now you do still have this much for your circles, which you might be able to get two out of here. For my remaining pieces of cardstock, I cut it like I did the first one per the cutting guides because I have a plan for those two and a quarter inch by 11 inch strips for a future project this month. Now you can definitely fold your card bases in half by hand, but I did decide to go ahead and bring in my score buddy to make a score line first. Now when you are scoring these or folding them, make sure you know which edge is the six and a half inch side. Because these do kind of look like squares, it's easy to mix it up and then your card bases will be a little bit off. So on my ruler, when I made the score line, I just made sure the top of the cardstock met up with the six and a half inch mark on the ruler and then I scored at three and a quarter inches. The original sketch calls for a two inch circle for your focal point, but like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to use one of the alternatives and I'm going to make my own ephemera to use in place of the sentiment. I'm going to be making mini envelopes out of this piece of pattern paper, so I'm going to cut out the white and the pink sheets and cut each one of those into two three inch squares. To turn these into envelopes, I brought in my mini envelope punch board, and for this size, I made my first punch at one and three quarters, and then if you've ever used one of these before, you just punch, score the angle line, and then you rotate it so the little pointy part on the punch board lines up with the score line that you just made. Now I do go ahead and punch the corners using the board, and then you'll see here, you could use the notebook paper on the outside, or those cute hearts. In the end, I do end up using some of each. Since I'm gonna keep the cards pretty flat, I did want to give a little bit of extra dimension to these envelopes and make them look a little bit more realistic. So when I adhered the top flap down, I put a little foam dot on the back so it stayed closed, but it just popped up a little bit from the base of the envelope. I continued putting these together until all eight were done. My next step was to get pattern paper pieces B and C matted with cardstocks B and C. 
to do this pattern paper piece B got adhesive on the back and centered onto cardstock B with a white border all the way around it. I did decide to go ahead and use the back sides of the pattern paper, so you'll see here I have four different patterns. Now for piece C, the adhesive goes on the back, but it does not get centered in the area. It is going to fill that space left to right, and then there will be white borders or whatever cardstock color you choose on the top and bottom. Now that those are all matted, I can gather together each of the pieces, all one on a card front, or what I call making the card kits. I'm going to match up the two left patterns together and the two right patterns together. On your cards, pieces A and C will always use the same pattern, and then you use the second one for that vertical strip in the center. Now I do go ahead and offset each of the pieces for the cards just to make them easier to grab later when I'm putting these on the card fronts. I'll let you watch the rest of the process and play a little music. I brought back in my card bases and now I'm going to take one of the card kits that I just put together and adhere those pieces to the front. Pattern paper piece A gets centered with an even white border all the way around and then I place the matted B's in the center of that and then for the C strip I'm going to put adhesive on the back and this is a place where you can make it your own and move that piece up or down to fit your needs. For me right now I'm going to go ahead and stick pretty much to what the original sketch calls for leaving probably an inch of the pattern paper below the strip. I continued this same process until all eight card fronts were decorated and you'll see here that because I use the back sides of the papers that I do have a little bit of variety in the way the cards look. Even though my envelope takes up the space where the original focal point would be, I still want to add a sentiment to the front of the cards. So I chose this banner die because it would fit the Sending You Love sentiment from this Photo Play paper stamp set. And I'm going to be stamping that in red on some of those white scraps from when I cut down the card stocks earlier. I will be stamping the sentiment in Gina K Designs Red Hot and I am using the stick and stamp mat in my Misty to hold my fishtail banners in place. I'm going to set the sentiment up to the left of the fishtail banner and then once I have that set up I can stamp, remove, replace with the next one and keep going until I have 8 sentiments. Now while I do that, I did want to stop by with a fun announcement or congratulations and that is to my channel members who celebrated one year of membership in December 2022. Up on screen now is each of the members. I just wanted to say thank you so much for your continued support and I hope you're enjoying the perks of membership. Channel membership is a great way to show your favorite creators that you appreciate what they do. Here on my channel, I have memberships starting as low as $1.99 a month. You can check out the join button below this video, or I do have a link in the description box to find out more about the perks and levels. Probably the most favorite perk, which does start at the $1.99 level, is the Sheetload Visual Archive. You can see it up on screen now, and what it is is thumbnails of each month's sheet load with a direct link to download it. So if you're looking for past issues, you don't have to go back and watch all of the videos to find out the links and passwords. You have this one-stop shop as long as you are a member. Once I had all of my sentiments stamped, I brought in my little photo trimmer and I cut some of the extra white off the right side. I think these ended up being about 2 and 1 8 inches wide. Then to adhere them to my card front, I used my tape runner and I aligned the right edge of the banner with the right edge of pattern paper PC. 
to adhere the envelope since they already had a little dimension with the foam under the flap, I used my ATG once again and placed these flat down onto the card fronts. I did make them a little bit slanted right to the upper left of the sentiment strip. Now I did play around a little bit with which envelopes I thought looked good and eventually I did get the eight matched up and onto their card fronts. Once I had all of the envelopes in place, I thought they needed a little bit something extra. So I used a scrap of red cardstock and off camera die cut eight little hearts. I adhered one to each of the envelope flaps and I let those dry for about five minutes. Now while they were drying, I cut up the scraps of pattern paper I had left over and I decorated the inside of the cards with a couple little strips. And check this out. After I had those decorated, these were the only scraps I had left. So I would say that was a success. I could have stopped here, but I did decide to add a little bit of sparkle. To do that, I used my Stardust Stickles to put a thin layer down on each of the red hearts. I set these in a safe place overnight so they could dry well, and here are some close-up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together my first set of cards using the January 2023 sheet load. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to click on the hashtag or the search links in the description box to see what the collaboration team has created. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.